You're plowing towards a black hole and it's too late to turn back now. Let's take a look minute by minute at the uniquely eerie series of unescapable events that lie in your immediate future. What will you experience as you fall into the black hole? Aside from overwhelming regret, probably, but at least you won't suffer for long. On the other hand, you'll also suffer for an eternity. Your journey has barely even begun and already we need to split your experience into two timelines to fully understand it. Two perspectives, one being what you will see, and the other being the much different series of events that an outside observer would report. As you get closer to the black hole, space is becoming warped beyond anything that makes sense. At the point of the photon sphere, if you were able to hang out for a bit, you could look to the side and probably see the back of your own head as even light itself orbits the dark star. This warping of space-time is also causing the black hole to fill your field of vision far beyond what you would expect. If you look back, you would be able to see the universe as an ever-shrinking disk in the sky, growing smaller and smaller as you fall farther. As you drift closer and closer to the black hole, you're not going to smack right into it. <coughs> Despite having gone past the event horizon, the point of no return, you float on deeper into the black hole without even noticing anything odd having happened. That's what you experience. But if someone watching from a safe distance could hear that story, they would call you a liar liar not truth teller. From their perspective, you would start slowing down as you approach the black hole, going slower and slower until at the event horizon, you eventually come to a stop. They would see you frozen there in space and time as if you chickened out. Beyond the event horizon, space and time aren't anything like what we're used to. You are now destined to fall all the way down to the center to the singularity. It's not just that you couldn't move fast enough to fight the pool of gravity, but that some aspects of space and time have now swapped roles. You are unavoidably heading towards the singularity in the same way that we on the outside are headed towards Tuesday. The center of the black hole is not just a spot in space you are pointed at, it's a point in time in your future. When we talk about the size of a black hole, we're really talking about the size of its event horizon. That's what we see from the outside. Black holes come in a wide range of sizes, from hypothetical specks too small to even see, up to the largest yet recorded 100 billion times the mass of the sun. Check this comparison video out if you want a better sense of scale. But the big sphere that we see is just an illusion. It's absolute darkness stemming from the point where no light can escape gravity. The black hole itself is the singularity, the point at the very center. And the singularity is infinitely dense, meaning different amounts of matter exist depending on the size of the black hole, but the core is always infinitely dense. An easier way to think about this is that the singularity has a volume of zero. Density is just mass divided by volume, so this number can change, but this is always zero, so density remains infinite. Poorly programmed computers that allow a user to try dividing by zero will crash. It tries over and over to reduce the number by zero amount until it arrives at an answer creating an infinite loop that makes no progress. This is kind of like that except it's our brains that crash trying to sort it all out. If this is hard to wrap your head around, it's not just you. Our understanding of physics breaks at the singularity. Relativity is all based on math, and you can't do math with divisions of zero. We can get really close by using very large numbers, but even 9999999 followed by 9 trillion nines is not infinity. It is, in fact, still infinitely far away from being infinity. But the universe loses no sleep over failing to make sense to us, and the black hole lives on. The more massive it is, the more gradually the effects of gravity increase and the more time you have to take in your experience before the next step begins. Which is a phase that some wacky scientists decided to name, not inaccurately, spaghettification. 
The singularity is the source of all of this space bending gravity, and as you get closer to it, tidal forces intensify. If you're falling feet first, then the lower part of your body experiences incomprehensibly stronger forces than your head. It's hard to think of a better term to describe what happens, but I'm sure spaghettification gives you a pretty good idea either way. The distorted space-time has caused ordinary light captured by the black hole to become blue-shifted to such an extent that it is now extremely powerful gamma-ray radiation. You're not only spaghetti, you are deep-fried spaghetti. Needless to say, you are quite dead by now. But to an outside observer whose watch reads the same time as yours, you're still frozen at the event horizon in one piece. If that person spends an eternity watching you, then they are probably quite dull and desperately need a better hobby, but they will never see you move forward. You will slowly fade into various shades of red as your light is elongated, growing fainter and fainter until it crosses beyond the visible spectrum. From your very different perspective, your experience is the extreme opposite. You are now far, far into the future. You can't see it obscured by the blackness above, but every person who will ever be has now been born and has already died. The Earth is no more, having seen its last days as the sun expands into a red giant and swallows it whole. The sun itself is now long since burnt out and has fizzled away into nothing. At this point, as you reach the singularity, well, nobody really has any idea what happens. The events up until now can be explained and calculated using reliable formulas. The singularity exists as math, but unless your calculator has an infinity button or can divide by zero, then the math that describes the singularity is just gibberish. This is where our models break. Either we need new physics to be able to describe the singularity, or maybe science isn't the problem and the singularity is simply beyond what we as humans are capable of understanding. Maybe at this point you become part of the black hole's infinitely dense existence. Maybe your mass slowly radiates away in the form of Hawking radiation. Maybe it explodes back out in a white hole that lies on the other side. Maybe the singularity at the center of every black hole is the same type of thing that caused the Big Bang, and your mass is now part of an entirely new universe, which is filled with more black holes that each contain more universes inside of them, all within our own universe that is really just the inside of another black hole inside of another universe. Or maybe not. At least you're no longer concerned with such things. You're now just what remains of Chef Boyardee's worst product ever.